Hey guys, uh, today instead of doing one of my normal journal entries, I'm going to instead talk about the upcoming general election in the United States, specifically California. Now personally, this is going to be the first general election in the United States that I get to vote on. So I've been trying to do a lot of research just to prepare myself for the decisions that I'm going to have to make while I'm voting. Obviously, I'm overseas currently, but I got my ballot in the mail and I was reading through it and I realized that a lot of it's really difficult to understand. Now, I'm not going to be talking about the presidential candidates in this video. Instead, I'm going to be focusing on the propositions that we'll be voting on in California. A lot of people don't realize it, but the down-ballot propositions that we vote on every four years are arguably more important than who we pick to be the president of the United States. So if you're a Californian voting in this election, I wanted to help you and make a breakdown in easy-to-understand English uh, of what exactly you're voting on. Now, obviously, I'm going to try to be as nonpartisan and unbiased as I can be. But this is going to be a very simplified version of very complicated arguments that are being made for and against all of these bills. And you shouldn't just trust me. Go and actually do the research for, you, for yourself. So let's just jump right into it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick overview of what that bill is and what the supporters say about it and what the opponents say about it. And then I'll move on to the next one. Prop 51 wants to put $9 billion in bonds towards schools and community colleges. Now keep in mind that this is a bond, pretty much a loan, that California is going to have to be paying back $500 million every year for the next 35 years. So this is really putting California in a little bit more debt for the next 35 years in exchange for helping out our schools and our colleges. Supporters are saying that schools all across the state are falling apart and that this money would go towards fixing them, in addition to making school more affordable and uh, having more job training opportunities for veterans. Opponents are saying that California is already spending $2 billion a year on bonds for schools and our schools are doing pretty well already already and we don't need that extra debt. They also claim that the way that this bill is written, it would favor wealthier schools and that the poorer schools that actually need the money wouldn't end up getting that much of it. Prop 52 is a little bit complicated, so let me explain a little bit of backstory for this. Apparently, the federal government will match whatever money California raises for Medicare. So if California can raise $4 billion in grants for hospitals, the federal government will match an additional $4 billion to go to those hospitals. So since 2009, California has required hospitals to pay this fee every year that goes into that fund. And then the federal government will match the money in that fund, and then the money goes back to those hospitals. It's effectively the hospitals investing money and the government giving them more money in return. Prop 52 does a couple things. It will extend those laws that make hospitals have to pay this fee every single year. And um, it should, in theory, uh, give more money to California and Medicare and hospitals. It also makes it more difficult to repeal this, requiring a two-thirds vote if people decide that it's a bad idea. So supporters are saying, we've already been doing this for a while, we should keep it going, and it's generating $3 billion a year about in pretty much free money towards hospitals. Opponents of this bill are concerned because they say that the bill is poorly written and that there's no accountability for the people who get the money, so hospital CEOs might be able to spend this money on whatever they want. Prop 53 says that any state-funded projects that cost over $2 billion have to be voted on by the public. This pretty much means that if any big projects come through that are going to cost a lot of money, a panel of legislators can't decide on it. It has to be decided on by the citizens of the entire state. Supporters claim that voters should have a say in how their money is spent and that any huge projects should be decided on by us, not the government. It would also increase transparency in our government and what we're doing with all of our money. Opponents say that this would remove local control over some larger projects and that if there was a major project that needed to happen in Northern California, the entire state, including Southern California, which it wouldn't affect, would be voting on that. And it could prevent things that are really important for one part of the state, but not the other, from actually going through.
Prop 54 just says that if our state government's going to vote on any bills, those bills have to be filmed and posted online at least 72 hours before they actually vote. The supporters are saying that this will increase transparency in our government and that it will prevent our government from voting on things behind closed doors. And also that every voter deserves to know what's being voted on in our state government. Opponents say that this proposition was actually created by a billionaire who wants to have greater control over our election cycles and our legislation. They say that this is just going to give more power to special interests and it'll also restrict the lawmaking process. So in 2012, a proposition was passed that was going to temporarily increase the taxes on wealthy individuals who had an income of over a quarter of a million dollars every year. The proceeds from this extra tax would then completely go towards schools and community colleges, and then it was supposed to be phased out by 2018. Prop 55 wants to extend this tax on the rich indefinitely and require that all money is tightly audited and goes towards schools. Supporters say that this doesn't actually increase taxes for anybody because those who would be taxed by this proposition have already been paying that tax for the last couple of years and that this is just continuing something that we've already done for a while. They claim that this is only a tax on the super wealthy and that all of the money goes towards public education. So opponents say that this was supposed to be a temporary tax and that extending it indefinitely represents a broken promise by Californians' politicians. They also say that the schools are doing fine and they don't need any extra money right now and that this is going to hurt small businesses. Prop 56 increases the tax on tobacco products in California by $2, and the money that's made from that tax goes mostly to healthcare. Supporters claim that Prop 56 will decrease the amount of youth that's smoking and also decrease healthcare costs in the state, and it would make smokers pay their fair share of healthcare costs since smokers generally require more healthcare in their life than non-smokers. Opponents say that this tax actually won't be spent to fund treatments and instead most of the money will go towards insurance companies and special interests. They also claim that it's going to cheat schools out of $600 million a year and it's going to waste money. Prop 57 makes it easier for non-violent felons to obtain parole, especially with good behavior or educational achievement. Supporters say that Prop 57 is going to reduce the number of people that are currently in California's prison population and help rehabilitate those people who aren't violent offenders. They say that dangerous prisoners will stay in prison and that it's going to save California millions of dollars every year. Opponents say that Prop 57 is poorly written and it would allow people convicted of things like rape, assault with a deadly weapon, and domestic violence to get out early and increase California's crime population. Prop 58 will remove current laws in California that require that all public schools classes must be taught in English and also requires that where the demand is high enough, bilingual teachers need to be brought in. Supporters of Prop 58 say that this is going to help non-English speaking students not fall behind in classes and help them learn English at their own pace. Opponents say that this would remove the requirement for Californian schools to teach in English at all and it would also overturn policies that have previously improved English education. In 2010, the Supreme Court ruled that political donations and contributions were protected under free speech in the United States Constitution. Prop 59 wants to overturn this ruling in California and allow for regulation over political donations in our state. Supporters say that this would limit excessive political spending and bring the power back to the voters and not corporations. Opponents say that we shouldn't be tinkering with the United States Constitution and that this will hurt small businesses, in addition to saying that this isn't going to stop non-corporate groups from donating money to politics. Prop 60 requires adult film actors to wear condoms on set. Supporters say that this is going to increase safety in the adult film industry. Opponents say that this bill is going to spend millions of unnecessary dollars, it's poorly written, and it violates workers' rights. Also, apparently porn stars have been protesting this whole thing, so I guess they don't want condoms.
Okay, so Prop 61 is a little bit tricky, but America has been spending a lot of money on medication. There are some drugs that used to cost $10 that now cost hundreds of dollars because drug companies can pretty much name their price. Prop 61 prevents state agencies from buying drugs at any cost that's higher than what the Department of Veterans Affairs currently pays for drugs. The idea being that the Department of Veterans Affairs pays a reasonable price for a lot of these drugs and that should be the benchmark for what the rest of the state pays. Now there are three possible things that can happen because of this and people have been arguing about them day and night. One, it could work as planned and California will get better prices on medication and it could save lives. Two, the low price could scare drug manufacturers away and then we won't have any medications. Or three, it could just cause companies to want to charge the Department of Veterans Affairs more and therefore make everybody else have to pay more as well. Supporters say that lives are at stake and that we need to have more affordable medication for the citizens of California and that the Department of Veterans Affairs is a good basis for how much we should pay and that it's going to save California millions of dollars every year. Opponents claim that this is just going to end up with the Department of Veterans Affairs having to pay more money for their medication just like the rest of us. Prop 62 removes the death penalty in California and replaces it with life in prison without parole. It also forces those inmates to work in order to repay either the victims or the families of those victims for the rest of their lives. Supporters say that this would prevent the potential execution of innocent people in addition to saving California millions of dollars every year and allowing the victims or the victims' families to be repaid over time. Opponents say that the death penalty is important and necessary for the worst criminals who don't deserve to live. Prop 63 does a bunch of things, but mainly it requires that you have to have a permit in order to purchase gun ammunition in California. Supporters say that this would help get guns out of the hands of criminals, and also still allow law-abiding citizens to own guns for self-defense and hunting. Opponents say that this is just a burden to gun owners and it's not actually going to stop criminals from obtaining weapons. Prop 64 effectively makes marijuana like alcohol and it'll allow it to be used recreationally if you're 21 years or older. Supporters say that marijuana is safer than alcohol and that we're going to be putting in systems in place that have already been proven to be effective in other states that have already legalized marijuana. They also claim that this is going to reduce drug traffic through the black market. Opponents say that this is going to increase driving under the influence related traffic accidents as well as increase drug flow in the black market. Prop 65 requires that money made from carryout bag sales in grocery stores in California goes towards the Wildlife Conservation Board to help save the environment. Supporters claim that this is going to help offset the negative effects from grocery bags on our environment. Opponents claim that this is only helping plastic bag companies and that the only way we can help the environment right now is to eliminate plastic bags entirely. They also claim that voting yes on Prop 65 is going to hurt Prop 67 if it's passed. Prop 66 strengthens the death penalty in California in addition to making the appeals process for death row inmates quicker. Supporters claim that California needs the death penalty in order to ensure the highest level of punishment possible for the worst criminals. They also say that it's going to save California millions and that it'll make it easier for innocent inmates to appeal. Opponents say that innocent inmates will still end up being killed and that this is going to cost California millions of dollars every year, in addition to not having as many positive benefits as Prop 62 did. Prop 67 bans the sale of plastic one-time use grocery bags at stores and requires that stores sell reusable grocery bags. Supporters say that this bill is mainly opposed by four big plastic bag companies out of state. They say that half of California has already banned plastic grocery bags and that we need to continue the success and help protect our wildlife and environment. Opponents say that reusable bags have a higher chance of getting you sick, in addition to costing more to consumers at a minimum of 10 cents per bag. 
So that's it. That's a rough breakdown of all of the propositions that Californians will be voting on this year. Remember, if you have time, please go check out more information on all of these propositions because there's no way that I could give justice to all of the crazy little details of every single one and everything that people are arguing over and all of that stuff. Um, most of my information I got from Ballotpedia, which is a great place to see non-biased information and breakdowns of exactly pretty much everything that you'd ever want to vote on and people and propositions and all that stuff. And remember, go out and vote if you can on November 8th, because especially the down ballot stuff is always super important and is going to determine your future more than likely. So there's no reason not to go spend a little bit of time out of your day to check some boxes. Actually, no, don't don't check boxes. Apparently that's bad and it won't count. You have to draw a line through the little arrow. There's, there's pictures on your ballot. It'll make sense when you see it. Anyway, that's it for all this boring election stuff. I'll talk to you guys soon.